Hello folks, Paul Burkita from Evolve Lab here with another weekly video, uh, this time catered around um, BIM in construction, specifically uh, receiving survey points from a field surveyor uh, and as-built conditions, and then translating those survey points into your BIM coordination model inside either the Revit model, the Navisarch model, it's all related. We're gonna show you how to uh, make that happen in a three-part series. Uh, this video will be step one, and that is getting the Revit architectural and structural models into uh, civil coordinates. Let's get started. So we have our architectural model open here. We have our civil CAD uh, linked in, and you can see the graphics issues um, that's being caused by that civil CAD because it's at, at such a large distance uh, inside of Revit. We're on like the miles, miles and miles kind of order of magnitude. All right, so we have our CAD, our architectural. We have a pivot point that links um, the coordinates between the two systems here. The two coordinate systems, the architectural and the civil CAD coordinate systems. So we have this this known point that exists both in our CAD file, our CAD survey background, or sorry, not the survey, but um, just our, our civil CAD background and our known point here. And so, what previously happened is the architectural firm uh, will have would have sent out the architectural backgrounds complete with a property line on it, send that to the civil consultant. The civil consultant use the, uses the property lines to locate um, that background in real world coordinates. And then, you know, the architectural site is obviously in that within that property line. So that is how uh, the architectural background is going to be translated to civil coordinates uh, in practice, you know, on between consultants. And then the, the civil consultant would then send the CAD background back to the architect who then links into their model. Um, so that is a, a very visual way that uh, consultants often collaborate uh, and get their backgrounds to align. So we are going to add another layer to that by, by putting the architectural model into civil coordinates by using its, uh, its own site, by creating our, our own site for it, our own civil coordinate site. All right, so we have our Revit with the CAD in it. We have our CAD open. And while we have our CAD open, actually, let's get this, this known pivot point. So what coordinate is this? Because we want to translate this coordinate over into Revit. So let's do the ID command, and here we go. X equals this. You know, let's just copy and paste this to a, a new, new text document. Copy, text document, paste. So X is actually our eastings. So we're just going to write east, Y is our northing, so that's north, and z is our elevation. Elevation, so obviously that mark, uh, the, the pivot point, the known point, was placed at the zero elevation. So we're just going to move this off screen, just keep that in mind. And actually we're going to use that here in just a second, so we can see in our architectural model what that coordinate point looks like. Okay, so we see our architectural coordinate here. Um, obviously that's, we want to get it to be our civil coordinate here. And so the way we're going to do that is we don't want to move, we don't want to move any base point. We don't want to move any survey points. We just want to change the coordinate system. And Revit has a tool for this. Oh boy, Revit model is slow. I think because of these, these coordinate graphics issues here going on. So let's try and get this done. All right. So. Revit has a tool for this, specify coordinates at point. That would be in the manage tab. Okay, yes. And we don't want to do any of this. We want to specify the coordinates at a point. We want to take our known point. This is our, our tie-in here. And we want to make that be this. And this is in feet, so we want to keep that. And so our eastings, we'll start with that, because that's up first here. That's X, control C. 
paste that. Grab our northing. Grab, paste that. And we're going to leave the elevation the same because obviously this elevation uh, is kind of irrelevant. I think this one's more accurate. So we're going to leave the elevation the same for now. See how that, that works out downstream. Oh, another key factor here to point out. So in our in our civil CAD file, true north is directly up. In our architectural model, same deal. True north is directly up. So the angle from true north to project north is zero. That's also key. They have to, you have, there has to be some coordination between the architectural and the civil files uh, to at least get them uh, aligned with a, kn a known point between the two. And they have to uh, be facing the same north direction, oriented north in the same manner. All right, so now we've translated our civil point over to our architecture. Oops, I forgot a key thing. So I just changed the coordinate system of our of our location here. We don't want to do that. We want to we want to back that up. We want to keep our internal architectural coordinate system completely separate from our civil coordinate system. So let's uh, manually type known coordinate of the project. Let's undo that. This should revert back to what we just had it. Excellent. Let's go ahead and make our new site real quick. Let's duplicate the internal site. We're going to call this civil, and we're not going to call it real world yet. Just we're going to call it civil CAD because who's to say that the civil CAD is, you know, 100% uh, correct? It probably is. This is, you know, this is obviously following the scope, but let's just uh, make it explicit that we are taking this coordinate system from a CAD file. Okay, so we've defined our new site. Let's make that our current site. See how the current flips over. Excellent. So now we are in our civil within Revit. We are in our civil site, but we're still in architectural coordinates. So we just need to do what we just did previously and specify coordinate at point. Manage tab coordinates. Specify coordinate at point. And there is an intersection here of of planes, uh, reference planes that were placed by the architectural firm, right on top of the civil point. So. That is how I'm grabbing that, that central point there, or the center mark rather. All right, paste those in the easting. And the more um, significant figures you have in your digits, I think the better, especially at large coordinate values. Uh, maybe four is good. I like to just kind of have as many as I can, can grab. Maybe this is a total of nine. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, now our civil or now our Revit civil site is in Revit or civil coordinates. Excellent. So we need to test this. The whole purpose of doing this is we want to bring in civil survey coordinates that the general contractor um, is wanting to incorporate into the model. And we want it to be in civil coordinates for that to, to just fall right into place so we can sh uh, drop them in by shared coordinates, link them in by shared coordinates. Let's go ahead and do that. Still getting some insane graphics issues. So let's uh, let's turn off our or let's unload rather our civil site background now because we just we we use what we we got the information from it that we needed. There we go. And so here's what's changed. I don't know if you saw, caught earlier, but our our base point was at zero zero or at some number here, and now it's in real world coordinates. And our survey point is no longer right on top of the project base point. And that is exactly what we want to see. We want to see the survey point now at zero, zero. And there we go. It's at zero, zero. That's excellent. So that means it's matching up directly with our CAD file here, because our CAD file zero, zero civil CAD is matching directly with that Revit survey point. So now we can share by, by now we can link CAD files in by shared coordinates um, theoretically, let's go ahead and test it. Let's crop review again, just make that easy. Oops, crop view. Oh, is that not? Oh, okay, I see. Let's go ahead and turn off um, so visibility graphics and turn off our uh, survey points just so we can easily zoom in on our on our drawing on our site here. Okay, I'm gonna get my hotkeys for our manage links, CAD formats. We want to go add and see this as-built survey. 
Well, now that we have that, this is in real world coordinate. Now we have our Revit model there. Let's go ahead and add it. Uh, let's make sure that we're in the correct unit. So we're going to specify feet. We don't want origin or we want shared coordinate. First floor is fine. These are four, uh, first floor stubs. Orient view. Okay. So when I zoom in here, I should be seeing a CAD file. Yes, here we are. External wireframe. Uh, quick note, these are the survey points that I've added. Let's go ahead and take these out, actually. This is in a later step. Take all the ones visible in the view, delete. And we have our CAD file. Notice that we're still getting graphic graphics issues with the CAD. This is expected because Technically, the, the base point or the, the origin point for this CAD file is thousands of feet away. So we're going to get some graphics issues with that. That's all right, because in later videos, we're just going to use the information here, the XY information and the elevation information as well, to place survey point families with Dynamo. That's the ultimate goal. So we, we're going to avoid manual placement and manual checks of our survey points, and we're going to use Dynamo to... Uh, place our, our, our survey point family all in one swoop. It's going to be great. Save a lot of time. Okay, but that is that is it all for our later video. This was step one in the process. We just need to first get our Revit background, our Revit architectural model, uh, concurrent with the structural model as well being linked in. We need to get both of those into civil coordinates. Mm -hmm. uh, we accomplish that by creating a new civil site and then uh, transposing, I guess you could say, or translating uh, the coordinates from the civil CAD file directly back into the architectural Revit model. All right, so just to quickly recap what we've done here in this video, we've taken the architectural Revit model uh, and the structural model that is linked into it. We've created a new architectural site inside of Revit, and then we've opened the civil background inside of AutoCAD, gotten the known point of the, the existing pivot point between the architectural background and the civil background, and then we translated that point into the architectural model in our new site that we've created. And we've done all of this for the purpose of getting our model in civil coordinates so that we can then use Dynamo to automatically read our list of points from our, our field surveyor or field engineers and generate content, either uh, survey families, pipe families, um, slab penetrations, anchor bolts, embeds, uh, what have you. We're going to use that information from the surveyor directly inside of Dynamo to automatically place those families in our Revit model. Uh, then we can either export drawings and backgrounds and field documents from, from our Revit model and those sheets, uh, you know, specific to your company. No, don't pirate anyone else's stuff. Um, or we can then export these uh, update point, updated points and models back to our Navisworks BIM coordination model and look at the results there. All right, so stay tuned. Catch us in the next one. I will see you guys.